Hello and welcome to News 18 Global with me Ayush Man Singh Jamwala. Our top story after France was rocked by days of nationwide strikes and protests, Emmanuel Macron faced a nationwide protest on Labor Day. This May Day demonstration is said to be the largest one in the last 30 to 40 years. The demonstration turned violent as protesters in Paris set bikes on fire and police used tear gas to disperse the crowd. Remember, since France's constitutional court upheld the bill in April, Emmanuel Macron has tried to turn the page of public discontent with a series of walkabouts across France. The French president backed the decision to reform the pension system and said it is needed to keep one of the industrialized world's most generous pension systems up and running. Despite the effort, the Labour Day demonstration has shown that the public is still angry with Macron. We must continue fighting to get difficult job recognized and for workers to be allowed early retirement. All things that will appease the conditions. But to say that this government will step back on the pension reform law, I would be hypocrite to say that I believe it unless they resign or there is a big revolution. But we must be honest with the workers. We must say that the fight continues. But on this particular front, we lost. We will win on other fronts. I think that democratically these don't represent us. We elected people who were supposed to listen to us. And we realized that we are not really being listened to because there were a lot of us on the streets and these were reforms adopted by force. And I think this is unjust. And I'm joined by Sanjay Suri on the broadcast. Sanjay, thank you for joining us. Uh, when it comes to the tussle that is taking place in France, uh, do you think Emmanuel Macron still has some political capital left to turn this around? Well, he has the court on his side. He has the law on his side. The Constitution Court ruled in support of him that there would be continuing protests from the unions was announced. And we are seeing more of that uh, today. Uh, which is uh, not unusual even though this is an expectedly larger turnout than uh, usual. Uh, May Day protests uh, have been happening around the world. But of course, France has a particular problem over the changes to the retirement age limit to uh, move from 62 to 64. And also, uh, very much more seriously for many of the workers, uh, they will get their full pension benefits only if they put in at least 43 years of work, which is uh, quite a lot. So a lot of people tend to lose out uh, if this now goes ahead and of course it is on course to proceeding. But uh, Macron is not really managing to win people over. These protests are continuing. Unions said that they will accept the verdict of the Constitution Court but they have the right to continue to protest and they are indeed continuing to protest. The matter is not over for Macron. Politically he may not suffer hugely in the wrong, long run because he is not contesting again. But clearly for the rest of his term, this is very likely to continue to hang over his presidency. Right. And Sanjay Suri, uh, give us the latest when it comes to the dynamics in the French opposition. How is Marine Le Pen taking advantage of this situation? Because uh, many opinion polls suggest that if there were snap elections right now, Macron would lose very badly. Uh, that is quite likely and uh, Macron himself has been acknowledging that there is a very uh, high degree of opposition to him and to an extent he considers himself a little liberated from these considerations because he is not planning to contest election again and he believes that for that reason he has the uh, position to take some hard decisions in the interest of the country as he sees it which is what he has done. He is quite deliberately stepped away from uh, a move that he would consider populist. He's certainly not on the election campaign looking for another election. And clearly, the level of disaffection that this uh, reform, as they call it, to the pension age has caused will mean that the opposition will be, to that extent, more strengthened. A lot of that uh, support that we are seeing being expressed is really a support of opposition to the government finding incidental and a knock-on expression by way of support for the opposition. Right, and Sanjay, we've seen among the protests also a lot of young people are also taking part in this entire agitation against Emmanuel Macron. Uh, more than the kind of debate around the pension uh, reform, uh, is this also an issue when it comes to disaffection with the political class? Because Emmanuel Macron did sidestep parliament and go ahead with the reform. Uh, this is really not unrelated to the issue of pension. You would think that the young have a, 
a long way to go before they hit either 62 or 64 and why should they bother but really uh, this is an issue that is affecting everyone because the fundamental issue is one of some level of job security as well and that is now gone there is a movement that began in Italy called precarity and that spread to France also very very uh, 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 very pervasively and that is an issue arising out of short-term work contracts, lack of security, lack of protection uh, for workers from uh, decisions that their employers take. And so there is a level of insecurity. The young don't know when they can get a mortgage. They don't know uh, when they marry, uh, how they can plan their uh, family, how, can they, uh, how they could proceed with what are considered normal life choices because of uncertainty in employment. And that has been compounded with and related to issues with pension where a full pension is not available, will not be available now two years later. So these are related issues and the fundamental concern uh, that the young have as much as the old or the, those in between is one of insecurity in working conditions and over income. Right, and this anger continues on the streets across France, Sanjay. Uh, at the same time, uh, Emmanuel Macron, as you were pointing out, has the court on his side, has the law on his side. What has, his, what has been his political strategy when it comes to trying to turn the politics around this case? Because he has sound economics behind his reasoning for this reform. He wants uh, one of the most generous pension schemes uh, in the industrialized world to continue in the black. That has been his pitch. What has been his political strategy across Paris, across France when it comes to turning uh, this entire public sentiment in his favour. I know he's, uh, he's struggling very hard, he's, he's failed miserably, but he's still at it because he needs to keep himself afloat till the next elections. Well, he has to keep talking, he has to keep trying to explain the government decision. And as you have quite rightly said, there are good reasons for the government to have taken the decision it has. Fundamentally, uh, there is a factor here where people certainly don't need to retire at 62 uh, given the health profile and given the uh, longevity that we are seeing it's quite uh, easy for people to work those extra two years on average expectancy so there are no uh, health reasons there are no age reasons or ageist factors that will mean that people must then quit work that early for the government to then start paying a pension at the same time the government does want to have people in productivity for longer rather than give them money for really doing nothing past the age of 62. Now that has been increased to 64. It's not absolute, it's not been suspended for longer. And there is some concern now that there is a limit to how much money the government has. And it's not just France, it's all of Western Europe that's suffering this problem. The economy is not what it used to be. These countries are not producing and selling enough within the countries or to the world. The income levels are following. Their commitment to social security is very high. That balance is not quite working out in France particularly. As far as people are concerned, they look at their, their, their needs, their compulsions, uh, what they would want. Uh, they will not first look at the larger picture. But of course, it is for the government to look at the larger picture and to see what adds up and what does not. Right. Thank you, Sanjay, for getting us the latest when it comes to the political tussle in France, when it comes to this entire pension debate. Uh, Emmanuel Macron has a, a huge political challenge ahead of him. But as Sanjay also, is also pointing out, he has no upcoming elections. He doesn't plan to contest the upcoming elections in France. So that is off the table when it comes to his political survivability. But he still needs to stay afloat in the years to come. And this is something that Marine Le Pen is using to damage his reputation as he continues to struggle in office.